This week, we'll introduce legislation that would give the economy a boost by putting money back in the pockets of middle-class workers and small businesses by extending and expanding a popular payroll tax cut. More than 120 million families took home an extra $120 billion this year, Mr. President, thanks to this payroll tax cut that we championed. The average family held on to more than $935 of their hard-earned dollars this year. We need to assure those families that they can rely on that tax cut next year as well. But this legislation does, not, does more than just protect the tax cuts Americans already count on. It deepens and expands that tax relief as well. Next year, 120 million American families will keep an average of $1,500 because of this legislation. That means they'll have more money to spend on necessities like gas and food and will buy things that help spur economic growth in their communities. Businesses will also benefit from this tax cut. 98% of American firms will see their payroll taxes cut in half on their first $5 million of wages that they pay out. In Nevada, 50,000 businesses will benefit from this tax cut, and many businesses will save tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. So this legislation will help families and businesses while spurring hiring and giving the economy a boost, and it will be fully paid for with a small 3.25% surtax on income over a million dollars. So a person who makes a million dollars a year, they won't pay an extra penny. Someone who makes $1.1 million, that is an extra $100,000, will pay $3,250 more than they would have originally. At a time when many working families are still struggling, we can't afford not to extend and expand this important payroll tax cut. So I was disappointed to hear from some of my Republican colleagues, specifically the junior senator from Arizona, who has already come out in opposition to this tax cut. I think it's fair to say that all Republicans have not, but my friend from Arizona did. Mr. President, this is wrong. Those who loudly claim to care about keeping taxes low, but too often it seems they only care about keeping taxes low for the richest of the rich. The same Republicans who today oppose a payroll tax cut for hundreds of millions of businesses and families last week jettisoned the hopes of a large-scale deficit reduction deal from the Super Committee because they insist on a massive permanent tax giveaways for the very rich. Cutting taxes for middle-class families and businesses should be an area where Republicans and Democrats can find common ground as we have in the past. Opposition by Republicans smacks of partisanship because this tax cut has President Obama's fingerprints on it. It was his idea. Republicans won't support it even though they know it's good policy for American families and businesses. Let's hope that they, that is not the case for all my friends. Let's examine the effects of their purely political opposition to a common sense tax cut. If Republicans block passage of this legislation, they will be taking money out of the pockets of American families. That is clear. A family making $50,000 a year, this proposal that we've talked about would not only preserve an existing $935 tax break, it would put an additional $565 a year in the family coffers. If Republicans get their way, that family will actually see its tax increase by about $1,000. If Republicans block this legislation, 120 American families and 98% of American businesses will not get a tax cut next year. Instead, 120 million families and millions of businesses will be hit with a tax increase. Those numbers are startling, they're shocking, but the potential impact on the large economy is downright scary. Economist Mark Zandi of Moody said the economy will likely plunge back into a full-blown recession, erasing the economic progress we've made if we don't extend this tax cut. It's clear neither our fragile middle class nor our fragile economic recovery can afford the kind of setback a failure to extend and expand these tax cuts would bring. Republicans say we can't afford to raise these taxes. If they choose to oppose this payroll tax cut, we'll know what they meant to say was, we can't afford to raise taxes on the rich. In fact, more clearly, we cannot afford to raise taxes on the rich, but we're happy to raise taxes on the middle class. 